Hi everybody, I'm Danny. Welcome to my channel. Um, this is really weird for me. I never thought that I would have a YouTube. I'm not the type of person that is like great at being like, subscribe to my channel, like my video, look at my life. But I feel like I have a lot to share and I am a huge advocate for eating disorders and I want another place that I am able to share my personal experience Maybe other per people's personal experiences. You can hear the tea going by. Hello, random people. I always wonder what they're doing and where they're going. Anyway, um, I want to use this as an outlet for myself and p hopefully potentially others um, if this channel decides to, you know, pick up a little bit. But... I want my first video to be an introduction to who I am. I'm going to keep it real and dive right into my story with um, anorexia because that doesn't define me at all, but it is a huge part of who I am and is a huge part of the reason of why I do what I do today, which is personal training. Um, I'm in school for psychology right now too, so I really want to help people with eating disorders with my degree once I finally get it, and um, yeah, it's given me such passion and purpose, and um, I really do think we grow through what we go through, okay. which is why I feel confident enough today to share that experience with you. So, where do I begin? Um, December 15th, 2010. Literally, I remember the days because I was traumatized. So that was the first day that my parents were worried enough to bring me to the doctors because I had lost a ton of weight. I was extremely irritable, more than a normal teenage girl. I wasn't even a teenager yet. I was 11, 10 at the time, 10, 10, jeez. And obviously like a really weird time for like most kids. I was definitely really confused and went through a lot and had a ton of anxiety. I've had anxiety and ADHD my whole life, so it's been a learning curve and that's why I feel like even at the young age of 22, I am able to share my experience and advice, tips, and, you know, passion with you all. Anyway, December 15th. That was the day that I first went to the doctors. So my doctor was like, yeah, um, you have a really low weight. I don't really um, remember those specifics. I literally remember what I was wearing, though. Like, these little American Eagle jeans, this um, Aeropostale turquoise shirt. I thought I was the shit. I had an Aeropostale graphic tee on. I was feeling myself. But I really <laughs> was going through it. Um, that was a really concerning day. After that doctor visit, my dad brought me to the grocery store, and he was like, buy whatever you want that you'll eat. Like, he was like, literally, whatever you want to eat, you buy because I just want you to eat something. So, I vividly remember this day. Um, I went home and I tried, we tried to, like, cook dinner with my dad and my sister, whatever. So, I ended up, like, buying these lean cuisine meals. Like, those are terrible for you. I didn't know anything about, like, actual nutrition back then. I was just looking at the calories, which is irrelevant in reality. But, um... I was like warming that up whatever I took like two bites and my sister was like so mad at me um she was like dude you told dad like you were gonna eat more like you promised like your doctor said like this 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 and I just was so upset I remember like crying being like okay I, I just was really feeling like I was at a position where I could not eat and even though that my, my I know now that like my eating disorder pretty much branched from my obsessive need for control um back then because I was in such an emotional state and felt like my life was out of control even at such a young age but um I felt like my intake was the only thing that I could control and where was I this is such a like a hard thing for me to talk about I often lose my train of thought but literally I felt like my intake was the only thing that I could control even though, in the end, like, it was my eating disorder that was taking control of me. There we go. That's the sentence that I've been trying to get out. So, I thought that, like, 
taking control of my like calories, my exercise, my like literally this amount of steps I would take to like get into Walmart from my mom's car, like stupid stuff. I thought like I was in control of that. That's something that was like my thing. But in reality, it was the devil on my shoulder telling me to walk the long way around the car, to shake my legs as I walk, to do a hundred jumping jacks and 10 squats or whatever it is like randomly throughout the day like that was my eating disorder pushing me to a lower and lower point and I did not see it because I thought that it was myself taking control and it's really not so anyway I don't know like how specific I want to get in this video if I want to do like a separate video about just interact okay so this is just mainly going to be about me and what has what like about my anorexia has made me me and then if y'all have any questions comments complaints concerns please comment or dm me or anything text me i'll literally put my number out there and i will go into further detail but where were we so anyway i had that whole ordeal with my dad and my sister on december 15th 2010 and um i was just really embarrassed because I tried so hard for so long to keep my eating disorder private. Eating disorders and most mental illnesses are extremely private. They're sneaky. Um, they don't want people that care about you to know like how bad it really is because then they'll be stopped. They'll try to help you and like they don't want you to get help. Like your eating disorder does not want you to get better. It is not in your favor it does not love you it is not good for you it is just a toxic relationship another one you need to cut so anyway going back um after that point i got a lot more secretive i set a ton of rules for myself um trigger warning i like wouldn't eat when i was alone um i would just pretty much exercise when i was alone um when i was growing up I was alone for a lot of the time. Um, my dad was my, my dad worked a ton, um, and like when I would come home from school, from literally like three o'clock to six o'clock or seven or whatever, he would get home. Like I would literally be exercising, and it was just it was awful. <laughs> like I had no energy. I was just forcing myself to just do ridiculous. I didn't even know like what effective like exercising was I was and honestly like thinking about it like how did 10 year old me like understand that what I was doing was gonna like make I don't know like make me look a certain way that I wanted to look I don't know but I looked awful in the end so I don't know it's just terrible it's a terrible cycle but um I would just do like crazy things um, these crazy rules, and I thought that that was me taking control of my life. My parents, like, were divorced, my parents got divorced when I was really young, um, like, I was sexually abused when I was really young, it was a really weird situation, and I never really talked to anybody about it, but I, all of that, like, added up, and I don't really know why it started 100%. I have a really, like, person, a personality where I, I'm not, like, a perfectionist, I wouldn't say, um, because I'm really, like, okay with things not being perfect, because I know that's life, but also, like, that may have developed as I got older, but I am definitely somebody that is, like, never satisfied, <laughs> like, and that's not with other people, or actually, maybe that's why I'm single, <laughs> but for real, like, I, with myself, am never satisfied. Um, I always strive to be better, and, like, that can be really good. Um, that can lead to, like, success, whatever. But, like, even at a young age, like, I did not feel good enough. And for some odd reason, I thought that, like, watching the number on my scale or the number on the size of my pants or whatever, like, drop, for some reason, that gave me some weird sense of satisfaction. Um, when it really shouldn't have because it was extremely unhealthy and made no sense. So I've tried to get to the root of why I developed eating, an eating disorder, anorexia, at such a young age. And, like, there's no clear-cut answer. There are so many reasons that eating disorders develop, such as, like, social, interpersonal, psychological, and biological. 
And I believe it was definitely a mix of all of that. Like in 2000, like 2009, 2010, social media was a thing, but not at all like it is today. Like I had like an AIM and that's pretty much it. I think I got a Facebook, honestly, like around the same time, um, which I probably should not have, but like... I wasn't, I don't think that I was pressured so much by social media like people are today, which honestly scares me, but I think a huge part of it was so much biological and psychological for me. Like, I know that I have a chemical imbalance where I I know, like, it's rooted from, like, an OCD, uh, I don't know, like, a deep-rooted, obsessive thing where, like, it's because eating disorder, I'm sorry, I'm like losing my train of thought. It's so hard to explain. Eating disorders are so hard to explain, but they are a substance abuse disorder. So just like drugs, alcohol, gambling, they're an addiction. So I was like obsessed with food. I mean, I still am. I love food. And most people with anorexia or eating disorders in general love food. Like your waking thought is food. Literally. It's really annoying and overwhelming. But to a certain extent, it is not really in your control until you learn how to control it. Um, my necklace just fell off. Down my shirt. Here it is. And I've always had anxiety. I've always, like, imagined these really crazy situations that are, like, pretty irrational. Um, when I had an eating disorder... <sighs> This is just, like, something that I want to, like, throw out there because people don't realize how much it actually messes with your head. It's not just about, like, me starving myself and losing weight. Like, I had the most distorted and just messed up thoughts. For example, um, I literally would not breathe when I passed, like, restaurants that smelt outside. So, like... There was this Burger King in my town, and when we passed it, I would literally hold my breath until we passed it, and I thought the smell would be gone, because I literally thought the air particles from the smell of the food were going to enter my body and make me gain weight. Um, I would do the same thing when food commercials were on. I vividly remember at that time there was, like, some Oreo commercial on, and I would literally hold my breath during it. I wouldn't touch food, like, even taking the groceries in. Like, I remember having an anxiety attack when my mom asked me to take the groceries in with her because I thought touching the food, it would absorb into my skin and somehow make me fat. I had a really huge fear of being fat, and that was, like, super toxic and irrational. I wouldn't touch people that I considered fat, but honestly, they were, like, healthy people, like, normal-looking people. Like, even my family members, I, like, would not touch them. If I did, I would literally, like, try to rub it off of me. I don't know. I was 10 years old, and my brain was so overtaken by this disorder, and I was so sick and malnourished that I could not make sense of it. Um, Overall... In April, I finally, not finally, but, like, I ended up being sick enough um, that my, like, my whole family, everybody, my teachers, nurses, everybody was extremely worried about me. Um, I, there was one day I did, like, baton twirling majorettes at this time, and I was, like, sitting on my couch before one of our, like, practices, and it was time for me to go, and I literally could not get up. Like, my muscles would not work. I was just like sinking into the couch I could barely see like I literally was so weak and I remember my dad just like coming over to me and like crying and being like you can't like go to baton like I'm calling your coach and telling her like you're quitting because you cannot do this anymore like he did not want me to do any physical activity which I understand like I cannot imagine me walking around like I'd be terrified but um it wasn't too long after that that I finally after like passing out one morning like broke down and was like okay like I need help (laughs) like I I was so sick and I was so young that I couldn't really understand it but I knew I needed help I didn't even know what anorexia was I literally learned what it was on April 11th 2011 
when I was admitted when I was admitted to the hospital and they diagnosed me with anorexia nervosa, I learned what it was. Um, I was I don't even want to say the weight, but it was really scarily low. Um, my heart was really slow. Um, my heartbeat was 11, 11 when I was sleeping and, uh, the heart monitor started to like go off because it was so low. The nurses like came in and I had to like check on me, whatever. I don't even like remember the specifics, but my vitals were terrible. Um, I was really sick for a long time. Um, I was in a partial, um, what do they call that? PHP partial, partial, partial hospital patient. <laughs> I don't know, but it was like a day program that I would go to. I sound so stupid. It was a day program that I would go to. And, um, I would go there just pretty much like school hours. I would go there from like probably 8 a.m. to like 3. It was in Providence and I would get dropped off there. I would have school there. I would have counseling there, meals there, um, group therapy, group activities. Um, this place was awesome. <laughs> it literally changed my life. I was surrounded by other people that also had anorexia, but there were people struggling with obesity there were people people struggling with fibromyalgia, like all these different things. Um, so it was really cool. Like, even though we may not have had been going through the same thing, like we could still relate. We were still at the same place. Like, it was a lot for us all to handle. Like we were all really young. Um, so I learned a lot there. I was also. I went through a lot there. There were days I completely refused. Like I had like a fear of mashed potatoes. I don't even, I don't like potatoes. So I think it's just because, like, I didn't like them. But I, like, threw a tantrum one day and, like, they made me have Ensure, like, the supplement for the, um, for the food. Um, and I was just, like, not having it. Put my hood on, sat in the corner, and just, like, sat there. I was like, I'm good. Um, there were, like, other situations. Like, I got in trouble for talking about how I didn't like one of the veggie wraps. And they were, like, they, like, screamed at me. And I was just so mad at them. I have this thing. Um, it's, like, so technically it's called misophonia. I hate the sound of chewing. So misophonia is, like, the irrational, like, hatred or fear of like a certain sound like you just like really bothers you to a certain point that like you need to just explode um I hate the sound of chewing and I unfortunately disclosed that to them I think my mom told them honestly and my counselor would literally eat and like chew really loud purposely during our sessions because she was trying to help me, like, expose me to that exposure therapy. Now that I'm a psych major, I know about all of this, and I'm like, damn, y'all really got me there. Anyway, I got through there, pretty much, mid, pretty much missed the entire sixth grade. Went back to school, whatever. So after that, that was, like, my first and only, like, big hospitalization, which I'm super thankful for. Um, I had a great team of nutritionists, doctors, counselors afterwards that pretty much kept me on track and, like, out of the hospital, even though, like, I was not recovered when I left the hospital. Um, years later, I mean, I definitely struggled with body image after and, like, eating enough and just my, like, my family was, like, down my throat about it, like, as they should be, they just care, but I developed, like, bulimia because... I went through a terrible binge eating cycle, um, which I still kind of like deal with here and there, but I'm so much better with it. Thank God. Um, and I would just binge and purge because I think for so long I deprived myself of so much food. Once I finally gave it to myself, I just could not get enough seriously. <laughs> and it was just like really 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 damaging um it was self-destructive because not long after that I started really really doing this frequently like every day um I I've had gastric issues like my whole life but after this point they were extremely severe like 
I wouldn't even make myself throw up in my, st I would just like throw everything up. I was regurgitating like pretty much every meal, not even trying to anymore. And it's because now I know like I created like this whole cognitive behavioral issue um, called like rumination where my body doesn't even know to like die. Now it's a lot better, but like my body didn't even know to like digest the food. It would literally come back up because of all the damage that I did to my stomach, my esophagus, like my small intestine, my large intestine, everything, like everything that I did, my, my body literally did not know how to expand and contract my stomach to digest the food. You can see my dogs over there. He's the reason that I am happy. I'm just kidding. There's so many, but he's a huge reason. I love you. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so I was diagnosed with gastroparesis, um, which is pretty much like a slow stomach paralysis. It's when your stomach does not expand and contract properly to digest your food, and it's really a slow, like, digestion. Um, you can't eat things with, like, whole wheats, whole grains, more than three grams of fiber, fried food, really acidic food, any dairy, anything really high in fat. Um, yeah, just, like, a lot of different stuff. Um, so, along with being diagnosed with IBS... And there's definitely, like, some other stuff going on. Um, but it was a huge wake-up call for me. So I thought. <laughs> I went through a ton of testing. This was a really awful time for me when I first got diagnosed when I was 15. And then again when I was, like, 18 or 19. Um, because I kind of, like, relapsed with the bulimia and binge eating. But this was, like, a really hard time for me. I was going through a lot, and it literally wasn't even enough to, like, scare me straight, per se. Um, I went through a lot when I was, like, 18, 19, and kind of, like, relapsed with that. And then went to the doctors a million times again. Got all the same testing. Because, wouldn't you know, doing the same things would put you in the same place. <laughs> Um, and you are just going to cause, like, not you, whoever's watching this in particular, but, like, anybody struggling, listen to me. You're going to cause your precious body, your one temple, you are giving so much damage just because you feel like you're not good enough. I'm here to tell you, you are good enough, and all of this damage is not worth doing for looking a certain way at all. And, like, it seems so superficial to do all of this to like fit into a certain mold but when it's your every waking thought from the moment you open your eyes to the moment you close them it's a lot to handle <laughs> and it becomes very overwhelming to do it on your own and your eating disorder wants you to do it on your own so my gastric issues are not something that I really have talked about publicly a lot I will talk to my friends and people I know about it but I haven't really posted about it much um it's something honestly that I think affects me more than I think it does um I'm doing so much better with it now but I have a much better relationship with food than I did when it was really bad so for example like two years ago um I would literally sit in the back of my college classroom and eat lunch because like I had back-to-back -back classes and my stomach was so messed up at this point, like, I wasn't even trying. I would literally have a cup that I would, like, throw up in if I needed to. So I would sit in the back of the class just in case I needed to throw up. Everywhere I went, I had, like, an, an exit plan to go if I needed to puke. Like, it was emotionally exhausting and physically draining to, one, have to worry about throwing up all the time. Two, worry about what people think if they see you. Three, worrying about people seeing you. And it's physically draining because, like, I was malnourished, wasn't getting enough, like, vitamins that I needed. I was getting super dizzy when I was working out and everything. And um, it sucked, like, having to take breaks some days from working out because, like, I really do, like, find fitness as such a strong coping mechanism for me. It's a huge outlet for me. So not being able to do that as much as I wanted because of something that I couldn't really control was super frustrating for me. And knowing that I caused that damage to my body was, like, both upsetting and frustrating. 
and I wanted to just go back and but I knew that God put me through that for a reason and I needed to add it as a part of my storybook (laughs) um there's lots of pages lots of crazy pages but it has all made me into who I am today So I've wanted to work with people with eating disorders since I can remember. Like, since I went through that, I was like, you know what? Like, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. I don't want to be a detective. I don't want to be a vet. I don't want to be... What else did I want to be? Oh, I mean, a pop star singer. Still want to be that. But um, I just really wanted to help people with eating disorders and in any way that I could. So... I started really small scale, um, reaching out to people that I thought might be struggling. And honestly, like, I'm sorry if I offended anyone when I did that. (laughs) I was so hyper aware of all the like signs and I was like, them, them, like I thought everybody like was struggling. I was so conscious about it, but I then, like, started giving different speeches, places. I started at my high school. (laughs) There was, like, this prom assembly for juniors and seniors, and I literally, like, gave this speech about how it was really upsetting and scary that some of my, like, classmates were, like, starving themselves for to fit in their prom dress when, like, that was not at all necessary. Um... I was so nervous that day. I was, like, shaking. It was just... It was definitely a pivotal moment, like, in my life. And that was, like, what really pushed me to have the confidence to, the next year, go to Massachusetts State House and speak with state representatives and Senate about different laws that Netta and Mita were proposing. Um, so NEDA is the National Eating Disorder Association and MEDA is the Massachusetts Eating Disorder Association. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry. Um, but I was with the Eating Disorder Coalition. I was representing Massachusetts and we proposed different bills. Um, the first bill that I ever proposed was about, um, getting nutritionists to be covered on mass health um, insurance because for federal like health insurance or state health insurance, nutritionists were not covered for eating disorders, but they were covered for things like diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis, which that's awesome. But nutritionists are a huge key component component in eating disorder treatment team and recovery, um, in general. So that was something I was really passionate about. And I've also gone on to present two other bills to state senate and representatives um some of which I am constituents of and that was a huge thing for me um it still is like eating disorder advocate advocacy I can't talk that's okay I'm nervous um has been a huge component to my personal growth um my recovery and just has like fulfills me with so much purpose um because I really want to make a difference in this world, especially about, like, people, companies, and everyone being socially responsible and, like, healthy. Um, so we also proposed two different bills about um, getting diet pills and fat burners, stuff like that, off of the counters because people, girls, boys, young people, whoever it is, they're able to walk into like a GNC or order on Amazon like these fat burners and diet pills, laxatives, all these extremely dangerous supplements and like pills that are not regulated by the FDA. They are not regulated by anyone because they are supplements. They're not food or drug, right? So these things are thermogenics. They raise the crap out of your body temperature and can literally lead to holes burning inside your internal organs because of how they artificially increase your body temperature. They can do heart damage from raising your heartbeat. Um, 
just so many detrimental things, especially laxatives. I know people that have gastric issues straight from that. Um, people end up with neurological issues because of all these different pills that are just filled with chemicals we don't even know about. Um, so thankfully, I was able to give my peace of mind about that. The last thing um, was a bill that we proposed about businesses getting tax cuts if they didn't use Photoshop on certain pictures. Um, so I think this is a huge thing because social media and society in general is a huge component to the development of most eating disorders, especially for like young men and women or um, just pretty much anyone that's like on social media looking at magazines anything like that they give such unrealistic expectations of beauty of your body of even like your hair like everything head to toe um and cause you to think like you're not good enough you need to look a certain way to be wanted by others to be liked by others to be approved by yourself like and it's just not true um and it's not real like even with instagram People only share the best pictures of themselves, the best angles, lighting. They edit their pictures. Like, it's not real. So st why are you going to compare yourself to someone who, it's someone who isn't real? <laughs> like, oh, it's so frustrating. But anyway, that was a huge thing that gave me so much empowerment and really... I hate that I am not able to go and advocate more for eating disorders right now because of COVID, um, but I'll get back to it. Um, so, yeah, I have also spoken with different sororities at the school I go to and um, different classes. There was a mindfulness class and the professor that was I was actually in a workout group with. Um, he asked me to speak and share my story there, and it was awesome. Also, one of my friends, Sam, earlier this year allowed me to be in her wellness seminar, and I was able to talk about your relationship with food, yourself, and others, which are three things um, I have in the forefront of my mind all the time. I'm constantly working on that, and um, my, my relationship with myself is what the biggest focus right now. Um, I think like the relationship with food was first, then others. Now I'm finally kind of mostly working on the relationship with myself, which has been a really amazing and beautiful journey. So ultimately what I want to do is open a wellness center that incorporates both fitness and mental health. So I want to offer one-on-one -on -one in group therapy and one-on-one -on -one in group fitness. So I also want to offer some classes. So that could be group fitness classes or classes that like actually teach you why personal trainers and like fitness professionals give you the suggestions that they do because nutritionists for so long told me to like eat in certain things for whatever or like I don't know, I would get advice from certain fitness professionals and wouldn't know the reason why behind it. So when I work with my clients, I really try to like get them to understand why I recommend the things that I do because I think you're more likely to actually do it if you understand it. So um, I want to offer classes about like nutrition, weightlifting, HIIT, uh, metabolism, coping mechanisms, Psych, like, psych 101, like, I feel like everyone should know coping mechanisms, know psych 101, take affirmation classes, meditate, like, why don't we do this in middle school, elementary school, high school, oh, I think they're starting to now, thank god, but I hate that that drawer is open, um, where was I, yeah, so, like, if I didn't go through what I went through, I wouldn't have this vision of the future, um, I already have a name for my business, but I don't think I want to share it yet. But if I didn't go through that, I don't think I would be a personal trainer today. Um, which I didn't, like, want to be a personal trainer until, like, two years ago when my friend at the gym, like, asked me to do an internship with their company. They were just starting, and I did group fitness classes, and I loved it. And then I started... Like, people were just asking me for more and more advice. So I decided to, like, take the certification test. I did it. And then 
I started working with Mike at New Human. Shout out Mike when I started posting more fitness videos. Um, and when I started teaching like classes on campus at BSU. So then I started personal training through New Human, doing my own boot camps, and then F45 came along, which has been an amazing opportunity and has helped me grow so much as both a trainer and a person and a friend and coworker and everything else. But um, I am so thankful for the random opportunities that I've been giving that have led me to where I am today. And I know that it's only going to help to push me further in my career, in my mental health journey, in my journey with anorexia and everything. Uh, it's just so crazy how things come together. <laughs> so uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, how I have kind of gotten myself out of that point. I don't know if I should share too. Um, I was kind of reflecting on this this morning and honestly like I don't think that I can pinpoint um, a time where there was like a significant mental shift um, besides like times in nature literally um, where I was kind of just sitting there and looking out at nature like the water or trees and I was just like reflecting on like what am I doing <laughs> with my life, with myself? Where am I going? And um, that doesn't always have to be a negative experience. You can literally just self-reflect and ask yourself, like, what are you doing? Are the steps you're taking today going to put you where you want to be tomorrow or next week or next year? And then make your goals based on that. Um, it was a slow change in perspective, but... Overall, I realized that the things that I was stressing so much about were extremely superficial, and I am so much more than that. I have so much more to offer than just my physical body. Um, I am such a better person when I love myself, when I'm properly nourished, when I'm not like over-exercising and stressing about fitting into a certain mold and being accepted by others. Um, you just got to accept yourself at every stage where you are. Know that most things are temporary. Pretty much everything in this life is temporary. So appreciate where you're at right now and make the best of every situation because life is too damn short. Life is too short to count calories. Life is too short for me to even count macros. I enjoy the food that I want to enjoy. I make sure that I have enough fuel to give my body what it needs to get through the day. I do not weigh anything. I literally, I really think that that is all just there to stress you out. And I try to avoid all the um, little stressors that I can because there are so many bigger things and bigger fish to fry in life than um, how many blueberries am I putting in this smoothie? Because I don't care. Food is fuel. Use it as that. And also... If you have a craving, give in to it. Trust somebody that had a binge eating disorder because if you do not give in to your cravings, I personally, maybe this is not you, maybe you are better at this than I, but once I finally have that thing, I do not stop. Or I'll eat something to avoid the craving and then eat something else and then finally eat what I was craving anyway. So then I'm like, okay, cool. Now I've had an apple, a yogurt, and the peanut butter and jelly that I wanted in the first place, which um, the only reason I didn't want it is because I already had two today. Like, but seriously, you deserve it. Um, thank you for watching. <laughs> I hope that maybe you got something out of this. And if you didn't, that's okay too. Um, if you have video recommendations for me, this feels so weird, then please let me know. I am here to talk about anything fitness, health, mental health, mindfulness, nature, singing, um, ukulele, dogs, um, any traveling, literally like I have so many interests and I am literally willing to talk about anything with you. So please let me know and keep on keeping on.